Imagine a continent that didn't just burn for a day, or a year, but for two million years straight. Not with wildfires or lightning, with lava, gas, ash, firestorms, acid rain, and beneath it all, an unstoppable force tearing the world apart from the inside out. Welcome to the Siberian Traps, the greatest volcanic disaster in Earth's history. Not just a big boom. This was a planetary reset button, and it very nearly wiped out all life on Earth. This is the story of the time volcanoes didn't just erupt. They burned a continent alive, and pushed the planet to the edge of total extinction. The Earth has stories written in stone, fire, and extinction. But few are as terrifying as the tale of the Siberian Traps. This isn't just a geological event. It's a planetary horror story that rewrote the very blueprint of life on our planet. Imagine a continent consumed not by a single volcanic eruption, but by a sustained, apocalyptic inferno that lasted two million years. This wasn't just a momentary geological hiccup. This was a full-scale planetary meltdown that pushed the boundaries of what life could endure. To truly understand the Siberian traps, we need to zoom out and look at Earth's tectonic canvas. 252 million years ago, our planet was a dramatically different place. The continents were clustered together in the supercontinent Pangaea, a massive landmass surrounded by a singular sprawling ocean. Beneath this seemingly stable surface, immense geological forces were gathering momentum. The Siberian traps are what geologists call a large igneous province. The term might sound academic, but it represents something far more primal. These are geological zones where the Earth's crust literally tears itself apart, releasing unimaginable amounts of molten rock, toxic gases, and primordial energy. It's basically just a fancy way of saying a place where the Earth lost its mind. Fissure eruptions are nature's most terrifying geological feature. Unlike the cone-shaped volcanoes we typically imagine, these are massive, kilometers-wide cracks in the Earth's crust that pour out lava like open wounds. Imagine hundreds of these fissures simultaneously erupting, covering an area larger than entire modern countries. They formed around 252 million years ago, just as the Permian period was ending. And despite the name, these traps aren't actual traps. The term comes from the Swedish word trappa, meaning stairs, referring to the stepped layers of hardened lava that make up this nightmare landscape. Over time, this volcanic region grew to cover over 7 million square kilometers, which is roughly the size of India. The basaltic layers of the Siberian traps tell a story of repeated, catastrophic eruptions. Each layer represents a different volcanic pulse, some lasting decades, others centuries. The sheer volume of volcanic material is mind-boggling. Estimates suggest these eruptions could also have covered the entire continental United States in a layer of lava over a kilometer thick. And it wasn't just one volcano. These were fissure eruptions, massive cracks in the Earth's crust pouring out lava, gas, and heat over and over. For up to two million years, this wasn't just an eruption. This was Earth bleeding from the crust. You've probably heard about the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs but that wasn't the worst extinction in Earth's history. That title goes to the Permian-Triassic extinction, also called the Great Dying. Around 90 to 96 percent of all marine species and 70 percent of land animals went extinct. Life didn't just decline, it collapsed. It was a complete collapse. These aren't just numbers. These represent entire evolutionary branches millions of years of biological adaptation, simply erased. This mass extinction saw the demise of many famous species. On the marine side, specimens such as trilobites, helicoprion, or other spiny sharks fully disappeared. On Earth, it wasn't much better. For example, the whole Gorgonopsians family was entirely wiped out, including specimens such as Inostrancevia, which basically was a massive saber-toothed mammal, also known as the Permian Tiger. It was saber-toothed before saber was even a thing. 
To put this in perspective, the dinosaur killing asteroid 66 million years ago seems almost gentle compared to the Permian extinction. That event killed roughly 75% of species. Devastating, but not a total planetary wipeout, as it enabled mammals, aka us, to rise from the ashes and take over new biological niches. And the Siberian traps? They line up almost perfectly with that extinction. They probably were a big factor in it. Earth can't really split wide open on thousands of kilometers for two million years, with no real impact on the environment. So, what exactly did these volcanoes do? Eruption after eruption, the Siberian traps pumped out staggering amounts of greenhouse gases. Scientists estimate up to 100,000 gigatons of CO2 were released over the course of the eruptions. Now, I know that the term gigaton is hard to figure, so to help you out. One gigaton in water would be the equivalent of roughly 400,000 Olympic swimming pools. In CO2, one gigaton equals the yearly production of the whole country of Japan. In the entire human activity since the Industrial Revolution, we've released around 1,500 gigatons. The result? A runaway greenhouse effect. Global temperatures rose by 8 to 10 degrees Celsius, 14 to 18 degrees Fahrenheit, in geological time scale, which is essentially overnight in planetary terms. To comprehend this, imagine every ecosystem on Earth suddenly experiencing tropical conditions regardless of their previous climate zone, including the poles. On land, forests burned, weather patterns collapsed, rain became acid rain, eating through leaves and soil alike. The world's ecosystems were choking on their own atmosphere. Earth's oceans didn't fare any better. As the atmosphere warmed, ocean temperatures soared. Warmer water holds less oxygen. And with excess nutrients from land runoff and volcanic ash, massive algae blooms exploded across the seas. Oxygen depletion created vast dead zones where marine life simply couldn't survive. The hydrogen sulfide production by anaerobic bacteria turned seas into toxic soups, creating conditions so hostile that only the most resilient microorganisms could survive. The result? Anoxia. Oceans became stratified. Warm, oxygen-poor water on top. Stagnant, oxygen-deprived water below. Oxygen just couldn't circulate. Hydrogen sulfide, a very toxic gas released by bacteria, rising through the water column, lethal to most animals, even at low concentrations. It bubbled its way up to surface. This bubbling possibly led to atmospheric poisoning and ozone layer destruction. Some scientists believe hydrogen sulfide even leaked into the air, exposing land animals to poisonous clouds and deadly UV rays. Earth was no longer just hot. It was inhospitable. Here's where it gets worse. As lava surged through underground coal beds stored in today's Russian permafrost, it ignited vast stores of carbon, unleashing even more CO2 and methane. This triggered a feedback loop that just couldn't be stopped till all coal had burnt down. More heat released equals more ice and permafrost melting. More melting equals more trapped methane released. More methane equals more warming. Earth was now stuck in its own self-made oven. The thermostat, broken. The door, sealed shut. In the aftermath, only the hardiest and luckiest species survived. Mostly small, adaptable, burrowing and cold-blooded, Creatures like early reptiles and certain invertebrates managed to endure by being metabolically flexible, able to survive in extreme conditions that would obliterate more specialized life forms. Even though survivors existed, it still took millions of years for life to recover. And eventually, out of the ashes, the age of dinosaurs would begin. But it was a close call. Extremely close. The Siberian traps nearly wiped the biological slate clean, now, could another Siberian traps-type event ever happen again? The good news? It's extremely rare. Maybe once every 250 million years. The bad news? We are currently emitting carbon at similar rates than the Siberian traps did. Some estimates suggest our modern CO2 release is up to 10 times faster than what happened back then. 
Oversimplified calculations would be that 100,000 gigatons has been produced in the span of 2 million years, making it a 50 gigaton of CO2 per year during this time period. We're in between 36 to 38 gigatons per year. Sure, we're below, but we're producing more and more at a way faster rate than what happened 250 million years ago. We're not erupting volcanoes, but our engines, factories, and deforestation are replicating the same climate pressures. Just faster. The Siberian traps show us just how fragile Earth's climate system really is, and how fast things can spiral when you flood the sky with carbon. So, let's recap. 252 million years ago, the Earth cracked open in Siberia. Two million years of volcanic fury followed. The largest lava flood in history engulfed the land. Oceans died, the skies darkened, and the great dying began. Over 90% of all marine life and 70% of land species went extinct. And it all began with a spark, deep beneath the crust. Today, the Siberian traps are silent, but their message, still loud and clear. When Earth burns for that long, nobody walks away unscathed, except for that one little guy that has been going vanilla for the past 300 million years, but we've talked about him in another video. What do you think? Could another mass extinction be triggered by our own modern emissions? Or are we smarter than a volcano? Let us know in the comments. We want to hear from you. If you enjoyed diving into the mysteries of lost species, don't forget to subscribe to Endling Echoes for more deep dives into the stories of creatures that once roamed the Earth. And if you want to keep exploring the incredible rise and fall of prehistoric giants, click on the video on your screen right now. It's another fascinating look at extinction and survival.